Hi there, today we are going to see a story titled Three Questions from Honeycomb, a textbook in English for grade 7. This story is retold by Leo Tolstoy, a Russian writer who is regarded as one of the greatest authors of all time. He has also won Nobel Peace Prize for his works. This story is about a king who has three questions and he is seeking answers to them. What are the questions? Does the king get what he wants? Come, let's find out. Once upon a time, the thought came to a certain king that he would never fail if he knew three things. 1. What is the right time to begin something? Two. Which people should I listen to? 3. What is the most important thing for me to do? Therefore, the king sent messengers throughout his kingdom promising a large sum of money to anyone who would answer these three questions. Many wise men came to the king but they all answered his questions differently. In reply to the first question, what is the right time to begin something? One said, the king must prepare a timetable and then follow it strictly. Only in this way can he do everything at its proper time. Other said, it's impossible to decide in advance. The right time for doing something, the king should notice all that is going on, avoid foolish pleasures and always do whatever seemed necessary at that time. Another said, The king needs a council of wise men who would help him act at the proper time. In their answers to the second question, which people should he listen to? A man said, The people most necessary to the king are his counselors. Others said, the priests are the most important. Aren't doctors the most important? Of course, we need soldiers the most, don't we, sir? What is the most important thing for him to do? To the third question, some said science. Others chose fighting. And eight others, religious worship. Everybody is saying something absolutely different. I still don't know what to do. Thus, the king wasn't satisfied with all these answers. I have decided to seek the advice of a certain hermit who is widely known for his wisdom. The hermit lived in a wood which he never left and he saw no one but simple people. So before reaching the hermit's hut, the king left his horse with his bodyguard and went on alone. The king saw the hermit digging the ground in front of his hut. The hermit was old and weak and breathed heavily as he worked. I have come to you, wise hermit, to get answers to three questions. How can I learn to do the right thing at the right time? Who are the people I need the most and what affairs are the most important? The hermit listened to the king but did not speak and went on digging. You are tired so let me take the spade and work in your place for a while. Thanks. And the hermit sat down on the ground to rest. When the king had dug two beds, he stopped and repeated his questions. The hermit gave no answer but stood up, stretching out his hand for the spade. Now you rest and let me work. But the king did not give him the spade and continued to dig instead. One hour passed, then another, and the sun went down behind the trees. At last the king stuck the spade into the ground and spoke to the hermit again. I came to you, wise man for an answer to my questions. If you can give me no answer, 
pray tell me so and i shall return home here comes someone running the king turned round and saw a man in panic running towards them his hands were pressed against his stomach from which blood was flowing when he reached the king he fainted and fell to the ground the king and the hermit removed the man's clothing and found a large wound in his stomach the king washed and covered it with his handkerchief but the blood wouldn't stop flowing i have dressed the wound and the bleeding stopped thank you sir could i get something to drink here's some fresh water dear friend by this time the sun had set and the air was cool the king with the hermit's help carried the wounded man into the hut and laid him on the bed the man closed his eyes and lay quiet the king tired by his walk and the work he had done lay down on the floor and slept through the night when he awoke it was several minutes before he could remember where he was or who the strange wounded man lying on the bed was forgive me i do not know you and have nothing to forgive you for you don't know me but i know you i am the enemy of yours who swore revenge on you because you put my brother to death and seized my property i knew you'd gone alone to see that hermit and i made up my mind to kill you on your way home but the day passed and you did not return so i left my hiding place and came upon your bodyguard who recognized me and wounded me i escaped from him but i would have died if you hadn't dressed my wounds i wished to kill you and you saved my life now if i live i will serve you as your most faithful servant and will order my sons to do the same forgive me my lord i am very happy to have made peace with my enemy so easily and i have won him over as a friend i'll not only forgive him but also send my servants and my own doctor to look after him and also i'll give back the man his property thought the king the king went out of the hut and looked round for the hermit before going away he wished once more to get his answers the hermit was on his knees sowing seeds in the beds that has been dug by the king the day before for the last time wise man I beg you to answer my questions please but you have already been answered how have i been answered what do you mean sir do you not see if you had not pitied my weakness yesterday and had not dug these beds for me then you would have gone away then that man would have attacked you and you would have wished you had stayed with me so the most important time was when you were digging the beds and i was the most important man and to do me good was the most important business afterwards when the man ran to us the most important time was when you were caring for him because if you had not dressed his wounds he would have died without having made peace with you so he was the most important man and what you did for him was the most important business remember then o king that there is only one time that is important and that time is now it is the most important time because it is the only time we have any power to act Remember then o king that there is only one time that is important and that time is now it is the most important time because it is the only time we have any power to act the most necessary person is the person you are with at a particular moment for no one knows what will happen in the future and whether we will meet anyone else
helped us by and helping the hermit the most the important business and to do that person good and because that is why he came to this world he also for that made purpose alone with his enemy by saving his life who in return asked for his forgiveness and promised to be his servant throughout his life In this story Leo Tolstoy explores the theme of wisdom, acceptance, kindness and forgiveness. He also conveys a message that a person can be successful in life if he follows three things. The most important time is now. The most important person is the person you are with in that particular moment. and the most important work is to do good to that person and if you make use of these three things in the right way i'm sure that you too can succeed in your life thank you